five Tazik full five at forty three. Divided Has anybody heard from ISIS since then? No. Is five divided by Guess what, dude? She took down ISIS. All right, the boot camp where students train to be pro-life foot soldiers. Let's watch. Oh. Turned ISIS in the was was. <laughs> ISIS fell off. The hood watches the Taliban now. Yo, they need to do an update with her. They need to do an update with her being like, yo, fuck Taliban. These college students are taking a week out of their summer vacation for one very important reason. To train as foot soldiers in the nation's war over abortion. With a conservative majority on the Supreme Court and abortion bans sweeping across the states, the anti-abortion movement needs a good ground game. Welcome to Pro-Life Boot Camp. This is going to be so fucking annoying. Hello. I can't wait. It's going to piss me the fuck off. So this dude. week we are doing a training session for the newbies at the uh, Dr. Joseph Graham Fellowship for College Pro-Life Leaders um, with the Texas Right to Life. Welcome. <laughs> We're doing a week-long training to become better pro-life activists and learn how to better talk about and communicate these pro-life issues to the community. All right, you're good to go. Hi, Hi Jordan. Jordan. I guess a big part of it is getting to know other pro-life leaders in Texas and getting to witness what they struggle with and learn from what they deal with on their campuses um, and bring it back to my own. Huh. <laughs> I'm Veronica Arnold Smither. Thank you all so much for coming. Text Right to Life was founded in 1972, which was the year before Roe v. Wade passed. So Dr. Joseph Graham. I mean, ironically, this camp also doubles as ironically, this camp also doubles as birth control because ain't nobody having sex with these people, okay? Like the easiest way to never have a child is by artificially creating a uh, situation where like you are openly unfuckable Graham founded Texas Right to Life he was a professor at the University of St. Thomas and uh, a student just like y'all went up to him and said hey I think we should do something about this pro-life issue it's really important this is a scholarship program for undergraduate students and they have to apply and if they're selected they come to their first week of training which is what y'all are witnessing right now how many students apply every year? Well, it's increasing every year. This year we had about 65 apply. And you and choose? We were able to select 49. And you said they get scholarships? They do. They earn $1,000 per semester. I'm a practicing obstetrician gynecologist, and I've performed over 1,200 abortions. I'm doing the math in my head. 49 students, a thousand dollars a semester, two thousand dollars a year, yep. right? So that's plus roughly, training and expenses. That's a hundred thousand dollars for one class, right? And just in scholarships. Mm -hmm. And then we're, you know, we're in a four-star hotel I know. right now. This is th this is unusual for us. It's yeah. really nice to be here. Who is paying for all of this? We have a lot of really generous donors. We also have psychos, dude. Fucking psychos. That's who. Psychopaths. I mean, look at Michael Pillow. He's like single-handedly fucking funding his own insane symposium, much right? Ten months have gone by so fast, hassle. They have too much money. Like, they just they have too much money, and they are fucking insane. Ton of donors who just give a little bit what they can, you know. Texas Right to Life does more than just train college students. Its political action committee raised three. That's so funny. Yeah, dude, that's how abortion works. I mean, it literally is, but it's pretty funny because like at, in the first trimester, when you take a pill, which is where like 90% of abortions occur in the first trimester, it's basically a pill that you take that, you know, you just pee out. Okay. It's heavy flow. That's it. That's literally it. I like that they tried to, you know, make a little baby in that fetus, which is pretty funny. 
but it's not even like a fully developed thing at that point. Right to Life does more than just train college students. Its political action committee raised $3.1 million in the 2018 elections. More than half of that money came from the Wilkes brothers, Texas. So basically it's a forced miscarriage. Hello, welcome to abortions. oil and gas billionaires who have been called the Koch brothers of the Christian right. The program, like this fellowship, where does it fit in the overall strategy of Texas Right to Life? We're helping train the generation that already believes in this cause, but may feel like they not have the tools to, to help. P, more like a period? Yes, it's like a period. It's a heavy flow period, which is also what a miscarriage is like uh, in a lot of instances. Too. And so we're giving them the tools. If you didn't know, some women don't even know that they're fucking pregnant and then they have a miscarriage and they think like, oh shit, I had a heavy flow ass period. What the fuck's going on? This is a sofa claim. The abortionist uses this clamp to grasp an arm or leg. Once he has a firm grip, the abortionist pulls <laughs> hard in order to tear the What the fuck? That's not real, dude. Yo! Yo, he just pulled the baby's leg out, dude. That's awesome. <laughs> this is so dumb. Bro, what the fuck, dude? Oh, no. <laughs> this is so stupid, dude. Oh, Jesus Christ. They're like traumatizing fucking little dumbasses. Yeah, it's, it's like a little chicken leg. Hard in order to tear the limb from the baby's body. This video isn't completely accurate. It exaggerates a bit, like the risk of abortion or how certain procedures look. But it's effective <laughs> because it's Can you even show this? It's not real, dude. It's a fucking cartoonish depiction that is misinformation. Like the risk of abortion or how certain procedures look. But it's effective because it's graphic and disturbing. It sounds like you put. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> what is happening, dude? Oh, this is hilarious, dude. Look at my doctor, man. My baby's getting yeah, aborted. Yeah, dude. Look at my doctor, man. My baby's getting aborted. For the record, what they're showing here, this is something that can happen. Yeah. If you have a serious medical complication, that is going to literally fucking murder you if you have the child and there's no other alternative solution. Humpty Dumpty looking. In late term pregnancy, yes, that's what's happening. In a lot of instances, the child is, the baby is literally fucking dead. Okay? And insane, insanely, insanely rare. I bet that shit fall off the bone. Oh, stop, dude. Of course, they're making it seem like every oh, abortion yeah, is like this when it's not. Abortion is like the, the first thing that they showed. A lot of emphasis on this fellowship. Like, it's very important. Why is it necessary? Why is this fellowship even needed? Hmm. Ten months with well, we are trying to save the world, so bingo. I want you to know today, no matter where you're at or what you've done, you can change. Make a decision today to protect the pre -born. The preborn. Science tells us that uh, life actually begins at conception when the egg and sperm meet. Um, and so that unborn child um, is actually a life. So, so right now, the students are practicing. I always want to ask these people, like, the, the, the classic, like, hospital question. It's like, there's a, there's a fucking play. The hospital's on fire, okay? You got 10 babies on one side. All right. And then you got a thousand in v, uh, a thousand fucking tubes of, of fertilized eggs on the other. Who do you save? You save the fucking babies? The 10 babies versus a thousand, dude. 1,000, dude. You're really not going to save 1,000 lives because of the 10 lives? You can save only one. You just. Not even a thousand, fuck it. One baby. There's a baby in a crib. And that baby in the crib is fucking crying. And then on the other hand, you have literally a thousand fucking vials. 
of fertilized eggs. That's a thousand lives, dude. You're not going to save a thousand lives? No, you're not, because that's not fucking real. It's, like, not a real thing. Nice hypothetical situation. I have now seen the light. The problem is, virtually every single person admits that there's a difference between a thousand uh, 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 fertilized eggs and, like, one fucking full baby. And if they say I would save the thousand well, fucking fertilized eggs in an, in an effort to be like consistent, then they look like absolute idiots. So it doesn't matter. It's a win-win. Table it. The process in which you set up a table on campus to talk about abortion. There are five essential rules to tabling. Number one, have to have a topic that serves as a departure point for the conversation. Number two, stand in front of the table and don't sit. Always have a female present because are optics are important. Keep the conversation going by asking questions. And last but not least, have a sign-up sheet. If I had a friend like you do, you know, I'd want, if I wasn't, I don't know, I don't know how to word it. You know what I'm trying to say? Yes, yes ma'am. Come on in, Erlen, quickly. Yes. So, you're doing a great job. Um, don't forget to ask questions. Yep. So, she said, no. I personally don't believe yeah. life begins at conception. Yes. yes. You had a really good opportunity for a question there. When do you think it begins? Yeah, what's your opinion? When do you think it begins? Like, you want to know. Cause I just want to give it to her, though. I know. It's a baby. I know, I know. I know. Ask oh, my God. They're literally training them to be, like, debate lords about abortion. It's literally just like, I don't care, dude. You can't stop me, okay? I'm going to get fucked. I'm going to let the dude cream pie the fuck out of me. And then I'm going to get a fucking pill, and I'm going to piss that fucking fetus out. How about that? Suck my dick. That's the way you should deal with, like, these fucking freaks, dude. Follow-up question, because sometimes people just honestly have not thought out their opinion. Has there ever been a time Literally where teaching them the dialogue tree. You've been tabling, and someone make such a strong point for pro-choice that you're like, hmm, <laughs> I may think about converting. Oh yeah, there have definitely been times when like pro-choice people will make an argument that I've never heard. Oh my of. God, this dude's man, this, this dude's name is Gunnar Austin. I wonder if he's uh, related to Joel Austin. That's like really, really logically sound, and I'm just kind of like, man, you put me in a pickle here. Mm. It happens, you know. Um, but the best way to respond to that is always to just go, you know what, you know, maybe you've made some good points here, and you know, I definitely see where you're coming from, but I still can't agree with your basic prepositions. If that butt, right? Yeah, <laughs> it's always a butt. <laughs> The abortion holocaust, dude. Okay, apparently they show like dead holocaust victims here or something. Months, but still here. Let me just like scroll through real quick to see exactly where. Because that's the other thing. Like they will routinely fucking do some of the nastiest shit. Like they'll show you like actually fucking dead kids and stuff like that. Yeah. Oh God, that's really fucked up. Okay, 807. What the fuck is wrong with these people, man? Hold on. Fucking Christ, dude. Oh, fucking psychos. Okay, okay, here. Does anyone have like a natural alarm clock? Like natural? I usually wake up like oh, yeah. like I you like my alarm. Yeah, <laughs> it's really bad every day. Uh, well, like, I just like <laughs> turn off my alarm. Right? Oh, okay. I thought, I thought you like wake up. Like... Good morning. Good morning. How y'all doing? Y'all y'all dress nicely. <laughs> Thank you very much. I, I, I clean up all right. Good morning. You guys excited about today? Yeah. Well, howdy. Howdy. So, normally, 
actually during our newbie training, we take people for a tour of the local Holocaust Museum. Uh, the Holocaust Museum is undergoing renovations right now. But the reason we do this... So we brought the Holocaust to your doorstep. Because I think it's important for people to see uh, past genocides. Uh, and not that we can say that the, Holo the Nazi Holocaust was the same as the abortion holocaust at all but we're going to generally imply it very strongly and then urge you to use that as an argument but i do think it's important that we draw from history so uh instead of going to the holocaust museum today we're going to watch a couple of films about it and then we'll have some discussions is he the only black person there yeah of course In July 1941, Hermann Goering, Hitler's second in command, authorized all necessary preparations for the final solution of the Jewish question. In several killing facilities. If only Marjorie Taylor Greene had gone to one of these things, she would know better about, like, you know, how the Holocaust is bad. Exclusively designed to kill human beings on an industrial scale, camp authorities used poison gas to murder children, women, and men. That's heavy. For what purpose do you have them watch Holocaust films? When we imagine the such a tragic time. Hold on. As, as Nazi Germany and what they were going through, um, we often ask ourselves, where was the world? And uh, it took a while for the world to catch up and to do something about it. A lot of students will understand the same line of thinking on where was the world? And now it's, it's my turn to take action. To future generations, it must be told in the 20th century, there existed a civilization. They're just straight up showing photos of like just piles and piles of dead people in the backs of trucks, like photos taken at concentration camps. Which for 12 years returned to barbarism. It could be a slippery slope to compare to the two though, don't you think? Like, even though you say Okay, uh, uh, Delayed Autistic Guppy is bringing up some CDC facts, stats. It's uh, basically what I just mentioned, but a little bit more um, coherent. 92.2% of abortions happen in the first trimester, and 38.6% of all abortions are medical. You take a pill. Less than 1% of abortions happens past 21 weeks, which is the middle of the second trimester. Okay? And they happen mostly because the woman's health is at risk. And we repeat this all the fucking time. I say this regularly. And yet it still somehow escapes. They're not the same. In a space like this, people are connecting them, right? Some people would look at that and be like, that is egregious that you would compare the Holocaust to abortion. Because well, there's so many I would think if we were claiming that they were exactly the same, then that well, would not be exactly. wrong. Yeah, but right. we're claiming that there is a slippery slope in people's mentality and what's going on today is quite different they were discriminating against jews and so many countless other types of people that they saw as unfit and uh today in the united states and across the world we're discriminating against an entire group of people the unborn <laughs> That's such a duh. The reason why they have to like remarket that as the entire group of people, the unborn, is because they can't say we're discriminating against fertilized eggs. Yeah, they're not fucking people, dude. They're fertilized eggs, dumbass. God damn it. Unborn people. <laughs> Slipping on semen, dude. Oh, no, really? Slippery slope of semen. So 
we watched a couple clips. The first one was um, a clip about the Holocaust, and then just going further and thinking how if you're against the killing of life or even potential life in a situation like Nazi Germany, can you still support the ending of life or potential life in a mother's womb? Ooh, Shiva. I don't know, that sounds like a little stretch, don't you think? I mean, if you start off with just, hey, do you think the Holocaust and abortion are the same? Most people are gonna be immediately thrown off and think, why are you trying to compare those two? Do you think they're the same? They're not the same. They're why not? Why? Because it makes you look like a fucking freak when you say it? If you think, why aren't they the same? But why? I mean, seriously. If you unironically believe that, like, you know, this is murder, it's baby murder, then yeah, it is the same. Actually, abortions will be even worse. I want her to say abortions are worse than the Holocaust, because that's what they believe. Two very, very different scenarios, but they have similarities. One of the main similarities is the dehumanization of people. They were referenced as Jews rather than people. Now, in modern day, what do you refer to uh, an, unborn, an unborn baby as? Why aren't you saying that's a person? Why aren't you describing that as a full-blown human being then? Why are you saying an unborn baby? Oh, this dude is so weird. It's like they, they literally got like, uh, they made a camp for like every fucking creepy person that you regularly avoid at school. Love that. Love that for them. Where they learn how to be more creepy and more annoying than before. They, like, learn how to improve their creepy skills. It's usually either an embryo or a fetus, right? Okay. But both of those, in their respective origin, either in Greek or Latin, they both mean child. And so, by dehumanizing it, by calling them something that people can't really relate to as much on a personal con kind of connection, then you don't make the act seem as bad as it is within this fellowship we're dehumanizing fetuses by calling them fetuses instead of like full-blown humans right except like you know you're doing that too you said they're unborn babies why aren't you just saying they're full-blown babies is it that you guys are getting trained to argue and debate or is it based in the idea of critically thinking about both sides of an issue That might be what? Calling them within this fellowship, is it that you guys are getting trained to argue and debate, or is it based in the idea of critically thinking about both sides of an issue? Yeah. I think that might be a better question for. Um, Veronica, oh, okay. the fellowship is largely based on people who have already um, have done the critical thinking. Oh, they them. already did the critical thinking. It seems like, it seems like they haven't. It seems like they hadn't critically thought that if they hear the other side's arguments at all, or if they're simply just learning how to fucking debate Lord against abortion. They're wanting to know how to communicate that. And also literally like he did not have the training to answer that that's now been added to the fucking skill tree or a uh, speech tree love that like going forward they probably have a pre-canned answer for that that they will always use so they don't get caught slipping on semen on the slippery slope of semen. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Eat up. Throughout the week, our access came with a handle. Kim stood on the sidelines of almost every interview, often with a voice recorder in hand. Uh -huh. In this program, are you teaching them to think critically, or are you training them to defeat the other side? Ooh, a good question. Well. I would say that we are Yeah, she never thought about it until this moment and totally wasn't told ahead of time that this is a question that's going to be coming for her 
and prepared the best possible fucking answer that she could give. Are challenging people's views. We are, we are teaching them dialogue and critical thinking, but for the purpose of helping a person. Oh, and then she did not answer the question. Never mind. She literally did not answer the question. She just said, like, oh, we're just teaching them dialogue for the purpose of I critical thinking and helping others. Longer refer to puppies and kittens as such. This isn't like conversion camp. Like, like everybody here adults. is already pro life. The they care about this deeply. And now they animals. may feel like they need to learn about other tools. So let's have a five minute break and then keep going. Stretch your legs, run around the block. It's so weird to like subject someone, like force someone into carrying a pregnancy to term. Like it, it literally makes no fucking sense. I don't know why it just does not compute in my brain. Like when I hear this, I'm like, no, that does not make sense. I will. I am the executive director of Rehumanize International. And the title of my talk is uh, Embracing the F Word, Learning to Love Pro-Life Feminism. Because, you know, in feminist circles, the word pro-life is seen as this, you know, like this cuss word that you can't really say. Because if you're a true feminist, it's presumed that you have to support the legal right to abortion. The core principles of feminism are equality, non-discrimination, and non-violence. Regardless of our age, or gender, or race, or religion, or nationality, or sexual orientation, we all deserve to live free from violence. Any sort of feminism that supports abortion actually reinforces structures of inequality, discrimination, and violence. My question is actually whether you can authentically be pro-choice and feminist. It is submitting to the structure of the patriarchy to perpetuate the idea that mothers are inherently disempowered, that mothers cannot achieve their dreams and their goals without their right to kill their children. The pro-life movement seems to tell people through legislation in every circumstance, if you become pregnant, you have to have the baby. So is that not counter? to what feminism is all about. So our proposition as pro-lifers is not to say that we want to remove, um, you know, nonviolent choices, but rather that abortion should be included along with domestic violence, along with um, rape, along with homicide as an offense that should not be allowed by law. Wait, what? But like, Okay, she literally just fucking, she literally just turned around and basically repeated that she wants abortion to be illegal in like a more calm and, and more wordy response. What the fuck? Like, she, she's the same as the fucking Mega Karen that we saw earlier, but just with blue hair and like, Patches that make it seem like from afar she might be like some fucking crusty anarchist when in fact she's wearing patches that literally are just, you know, anti-abortion patches. Like, that's it. Just compare getting an abortion to fucking domestic abuse and rape. I think there's also this, this idea that within the pro-life okay, movement, you, Jesus there's an inherent hypocrisy in that you guys are more pro-birth than you are pro-life. What about overhauling the foster care system? You know, what about Medicaid? Why put so- She cares so much. Look, she's an empathetic person. She's an empathetic person. She has blue hair. She's a feminist, guys. Look at that, dude. Just like I care more about the top of the hour ad break than letting the content run without it. I have such strong passion for it. The top of the hour ad break. That's only 60 seconds long. 
But I tell you, if you want to add free broadcasting experience, all you need to do is subscribe for $5 or for free with a Twitch Prime. That's the passion I bring to the table. Okay, you can also use an ad block or a VPN, but at least Twitch Prime is free. This is Here's the one minute ad break now. Pacific Northwest. Okay. I just aborted this entire fucking, you know, flow of content. Here's the one minute ad break now. So much emphasis on this fight and not when the baby is born. It's a fair question because it needs to be human rights for all human beings. But I also understand. Which is why we're going to do human rights for fucking unborn uh, fertilized eggs, dude. Stand the necessity that a lot of, you know, mainstream pro-life advocates have. And that is because abortion takes on average, you know, somewhere above 2,500 lives every day in the United States. <laughs> Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day, God. I ask, Lord, that you would be with us throughout this whole day, God, and that uh, your mercy and spirit rest with us. You can't be a fucking... You can't be a pro-birth... pro-life, I guess, but pro-birth feminist. It literally, unironically contradicts the values of feminism. Like, you just can't. Because you're saying... I care more about the fucking fertilized egg than the actual host itself, which is a fucking full-ass woman, dude. Like, what the fuck? It makes no sense. Like, you're literally saying, I think the state should force women to carry pregnancy to term, okay? Because I care more about the actual fucking, like, uh, uh, it, Dice roll that might come out as like the next Hitler or a cool person, like a chill person, yep. which is not even fully formed or f formed at all at this mo moment. Just a fucking fertilized egg. I care more about that thing than the autonomy that women have the over their the own fucking bodies. Also, I want to jail them. Like, I want to fuck their lives up if they do end up getting a fucking miscarriage. When we go to Planned Parenthood, as we uh, use compassion to maybe help and deter people away. Amen. Did my man just say dice roll of Hitler or a chill person coming out? I mean, this is the truth. You don't know what kind of fucking shit-ass baby you're going to fucking pump out. You don't know. <laughs> I mean, I'm joking, but... Yeah, I did say that. We want to obviously like stay within the What if you don't have a chill baby? Okay, what if your baby is unchill? You know? Love you, chat. The vibes are fucked at that point. You know what I mean? You fucking feed it, clothe it, give it food for like its whole ass life. And he's just like, I'm going to be Hitler. Well, the fuck you, dude. Piece of shit. Um, <laughs> what if your baby fails the initial vibe check? That's what I'm saying. I'm I'm actually post birth abortion advocate. You know, you fucking pop out the baby, okay, and you're like, "Yo, baby, what's up?" Like, you vibe with this, you know, you throw on some music or whatever. Like, if your baby comes out and he's like soy facing at fucking Marvel Cinematic Universe movies, like that's a vibe failure. That's a vibe check failure. Put the baby back in. Let it sit a little bit longer. <laughs> In pro-choice and pro-universal healthcare. <laughs> Let the baby marinate! Oh, Jesus Christ, dude. Yo, yo, my shit came out undercooked, dude. Put it back in the oven. <laughs> Legally pray so um don't block the sidewalk stay like in a single file line along the sidewalk cool like if imagine you had a whole ass baby that you you know gave love to and fucking treated right you know made sandwiches for whatever the fuck babies eat i don't know 
And then it came out to be this. That's terrible, dude. The sand that shirt is awesome. You should have tried again. I'm just saying, like that that didn't that didn't take. Okay? This did not take. That's a bad that's bad batch. I was three weeks late. I was a homeschooler fetus. <laughs> Wait, are they holding hands? Oh my god, they're fucking. Oh my god. This is literally the fucking Christian equivalent of like third base, dude. They fucked. Oh my god, this is birthright. But for unfuckable conservatives. Oh my lord. That's awesome. We're at the Planned Parenthood in Houston, and we're praying and just staying in solidarity with the women who are going in there and trying to show support um, so that they don't feel like they have to go through an abortion. This is the make or break situation. They're either going to go through this or not. Um, and so if we can be there to encourage them in any way to not go through it, I think it's super important. This is some level of commitment in this <laughs> rain, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> I love harassing, like, young women or even older women like people that are making an incredibly difficult decision okay that they themselves are having like a, a tough time with or maybe an easy one but regardless like i love harassing people before they get a medical procedure okay. i mean fuck it even like kidney surgery or even like getting your uh, like I had a, uh, I had a fucking piece of like bone that was broken the size of a ping pong ball in my fucking kneecap, right? Balls. It's a routine, not very complicated, same day, uh, surgery, a laparoscopic surgery. Okay. Even then I was like, you know, I'm, I'm dramatic. I was like, oh man, will I make it? Obviously not as dramatic as fucking Steven Crowder, but you know what I'm saying? Like, like I, that sucks. That you just like, you're walking into the hospital to get your fucking surgery. And, and there's just people being like, why are you doing this? It's the demon in you. Keep the god dang bones in your body. You, like, fuck so you, dude. Also, like, Planned Parenthood does so much more than just abortions, too. 14 months. Let's like, go. All the best there's passing. people there that are, like, literally there to get, uh, like, a routine checkup. There's people there that are, you know, going there to get SDI, uh, uh, SDI tested. You know, STD, SDI, full-blown, you know, uh, tested for free. Because they don't have money to go get it everywhere else. They do cancer screenings and shit like that. And while you're there, while you're walking in to do that, they're like, Yes. Sir. Don't do it. I'm going to harass you. Don't walk in there now. What's well, a life or death situation in this case? So <laughs> if fetus are babies because they're living cells, so is cancer. Yeah. I mean, the cancer doesn't have the fucking, uh, the, the capability of turning into a life though. Fetuses do. I, I, I recognize that. Take it pretty seriously. So this is my first time here and at any abortion facility. And today, huh? being in your first time. Mm -hmm. How are you feeling right now? I'm feeling okay. Um, it's not as scary as I thought it would be. Um, and I'm just doing what I can. So um, I feel just good that I'm Has doing what I can asked. by uh, being a peaceful presence here and participating with the other, um, the other fellows. The pro-life movement is rethinking its approach to protesting abortion clinics. No more signs with pictures of fetuses. Someone Scare made a Venture Bros reference and I really respect that. Good job, one chatter. No calling women baby killers. Now it's all prayers and soft-spoken attempts to intercept the women who enter. Every woman has their right. Like, you don't ever know somebody's situation. I was raped in my backyard. Why don't y'all protest that type of shit? And Planned Parenthood is the only place that I know that I can come and get checked. Right, we're not here to judge people. You know, we want to let you know that if you're suffering uh, some kind of atrocity, if you're in a bad situation with maybe your significant other or your family, there are people who can help. Look, 
when God gives you instructions, all you can do is Yeah, what now, dude? What happened when you face someone who's like actually, you know, getting checked up and uh, needs to get an abortion? That's the other part. It's like, if you are consistent, if you are consistent on abortion, it's not just the fucking in vitro fertilization thing that I just brought up. You also have to literally force 14 year old girls. To carry pregnancies the term if they have been incestually raped. Sorry, trigger warning. I'm using like really fucking aggressive language here. But like, that's still a life. That's literally still a life. You have to, you have to be an advocate for that as well. Because if your argument is like, if your argument is unironically that this is a life and you can't fucking kill it, then you literally have to do that. So why don't they do that? Why don't they? Why don't they uh, advocate for that? I guess there is a point where they stop. Thirteen months be our road. What do you guys make of all of the find one that is pro liver that is for death sentences? I mean, a lot of these are hogs, so they very likely are pro death sentence. The abortion bans that are being passed into law right now. Are you guys in favor of these? So certainly uh, the new legislation helps our cause. Mm -hmm. um, but ultimately, my um, mission is not to necessarily make abortion illegal, but to make it unthinkable and to make a culture that doesn't stigmatize women for being pregnant and doesn't treat pregnancy as a disease. Mm -hmm. Any legislation that helps save lives, ultimately, I'm in favor of. But I agree that I think that it's not just the legislation that's important. It's about changing hearts. And the culture. And the culture, exactly. Are you all in favor of making abortion illegal? Of course. I can see yeah. um, a possibility where towards the end of our lifetime, or by the end of our lifetime, abortion yeah. is illegal. Bro, this dude is, okay, dude. I'm not gonna say it, but you know what I'm saying, okay? This, this dude can be saved, okay? As a matter of fact, he probably has been saved since this video was fucking shot. Okay? I mean, come on. Hey, come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Hey, come on, come on, come on, come on. Let's just say he's in no immediate danger of abortions anytime soon, okay? Uh, of <clears throat> Even if he does end up having sex, he's in no immediate danger of, like, having their partner get an abortion. Um, but I think first we need to change hearts before yeah. um, we can um, change anything else. How do you save him? Unironically, he needs to watch like three Hasanabi broadcasts. If what the uh, testimonials are true that I hear all the time from dudes who are like, dude, I, I think I might be bi, like after watching your fucking broadcast, you know, it's just, that's what he needs to, that's what he needs to do. Watch a couple Hasanabi broadcasts. He'll be fine. Be the ramifications for someone who goes through with an abortion if it's illegal. That's more of a question for the uh, legislative team. In, our, um, in all of the bills that we write, the woman is never, ever, ever punished um, mm -hmm. for having an abortion. Uh, the abortionist himself is the one who incurs a fine and civil uh, penalties. Yeah, I would decline to answer that because I, I don't think anyone's going to perceive yeah. our answer in a, in a well manner. Mm -hmm. And I also, like, I'm still learning how to state my own thoughts. I don't really want to say something that I don't feel fully confident Because it was in the news in, in Texas um, mm -hmm. during the legislative period, which caused a lot of controversy. 
Students will get a crash course in legislation. And Wait, I want to hear that again. What did she say? The woman is never, ever, ever possibility we're towards the end of our lifetime or by the end of our lifetime abortion yeah. is illegal um but i think first we need to change hearts before yeah. um we can um change anything else what should be the ramifications for someone who goes through with an abortion if it's illegal that's more of a question for the uh, legislative team so that's a really great question because we never even get to that part of the argument which is that how would you know the difference between someone who had a miscarriage and someone who did a back alley abortion? The answer is you can't. It's very difficult to fucking find out. So what are you going to do? Are you going to throw women who just had a fucking traumatic miscarriage? Like, they're, they're going to go to jail now? Like anyone who gets a fucking miscarriage? You know how many miscarriages occur? It's so fucking common. In our, um, in all of the bills that we write, the woman is never, ever, ever punished um, mm -hmm. for having an abortion. Uh, the abortionist himself is the one who incurs a fine and civil uh, penalties. Yeah, I would decline. So that's the that's the uh, the the PR answer, which is abortion. Ironically, I mean, unironically, sorry, uh, punishes women regardless. Like you're being punished by carrying a pregnancy to term. And if you don't want to fucking carry that pregnancy to term, like, you know, any sort of restrictions on abortions is punishing the women. But the way that they talk about it, the way that they make it seem like is like they're, they're, you know, punishing the doctors only, the abortionists, the doctors that are bad, because that's the PR answer. That's the, it's easier to, it's easier to fucking get people on board with your psychotic nonsense if you make it seem like you're punishing these bad, evil doctors and not the women themselves. You're still, you're still punishing the women regardless. Wait, what is this? Kidding, this is my life. Okay, we'll watch this in a second. I have to go pee. I to answer that because I, I don't think anyone's going to perceive yeah. our answer in a, in a well manner. Mm -hmm. And I also, like, I'm still learning how to state my own thoughts. I don't really want to say something that... I don't feel because it fully was in the news in Texas um, mm -hmm. during the legislative period, which caused a lot of controversy. Students will get a crash course in legislation and lobbying in their second year of training. Texas Right to Life also sends six full-time lobbyists to the Capitol in Austin. They've championed laws that have closed half of the abortion clinics in Texas. Months, thank you. Right now, is there a lot of momentum in the pro-life movement? I think right now it's a really exciting time to be pro-life just because I feel like a lot of minds are changing with what's happening in the country. And so it's it's going to be exciting just in the next couple um, years, especially with like the new um, federal judges, um, to see if like anything's going to happen. But uh, yeah, I don't really know how <laughs> all that legal stuff works. And it's, it's exciting because there's an even bigger call for us to be active with all even the the abortion bans and such, we were called as lifers to step up and be there because now women will, you know, they'll be having more babies, which is great. And we want to be there and be able to meet their, their needs. So we really have to step up the game. Incredibly strange. How's everybody? Did you get actual sleep last night? Anybody? Three hours? Great. So if you flip your binder, it should be fellowship requirements. There's a Texas Right to Life copy and there's a student copy. You're going to sign one and then you're going to sign the other, the Texas Right to Life copy, and give it back to us. So that's way you always, that way you always know what is expected of you. So. As fellows, you yourselves are now affiliated with us. Um, and so we want to make sure that whenever you are speaking publicly, that anything you're saying or doing is um, upholding Texas Right to Life's values and mission. So as an example, we know a lot of young people really love Bernie Sanders. A lot of young people really love Beto. Um, and that's 
you totally your prerogative if you vote for them. But publicly, we just ask that you uphold our mission and our values. Does that make sense? Oh my God. Okay, any questions about that? Cool, great. Next. Oh my God. I think it's the beginning of everything. I think it's brought to light a lot of issues on my own campus that I'm willing to stand up for now and I'm a little more comfortable standing up for now. I feel like I'm leaving with a whole new family Deepa and I'm leaving with all this excitement to go back to my campus and Deepa present everything shit that to I've yourself. learned. yourself. I'm so glad that I was able to be here this week. This week has sparked um, kind of a fire inside of me to um, keep doing what I'm doing and that what I'm doing matters. It's all about just like keeping the focus and keeping motivated and like believing in my heart that what I'm doing is right and that I want to be on the right side of history. Yes. Ready, one, two, three, say babies. Babies. What the f Dude, these people are such fucking losers, dude. I don't know what else to say other than they're just fucking losers.